Okay, so first things first, I want you to go to Preferences, Gizmo, and select Local Coordinate. So this is just going to make your life a lot easier when it comes to positioning 2D patterns in the 3D workspace. Then go to File, Open, Project, and if you check the link in the description in the top comment, I provided this project file, which is Project File Mail. Click on Open, click on OK, it'll load in the project file, and we can get started. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my Object Browser Fabric, double click over here and just name this tie, press enter, and I'm going to change this just to a darker color. All right, there we go, and let's create our tie pattern. So I'm going to start by creating a piece of fabric that wraps around the character's neck. So I'm going to hold on my left mouse button, select rectangle, left click, this will pop up. So for the width, I want that to be 381 and I want the height to be 24 and I'm going to click on OK. Now in my 3D workspace, make sure this is on thin textured surface so that you can see the other side of this pattern is a lot darker than the other side. And I'm going to select this, right click and go to flip horizontally and push this behind the character's neck. Now this dark region is the normal and it should always be facing the character. So now we can create the tie pattern. So I'm going to hold on my left mouse button, go to rectangle, left click. And then for the width, I want to take this value over here, 24 and times it by 2. So that's 48. And then for the height, I'm going to put that on 300 and click on OK. You can always adjust the height because this is how long your tie is going to be. Now I'm going to just left click over here to deselect everything. Go to add point, hover over this line and right click. Go to Uniform Split and click on OK. Then go to Edit Pattern and just move this down. All right, now I want to flare out the design of this tie a little bit. So I can click on this point and as I hold on my left mouse button and click and drag, while I'm still holding this down, right click and you'll bring up this uh, dialog box that's called Moving Distance. So now I can type in a value over here for the Moving Distance. I'm going to type in 8, click on OK. So now if I go to my other dot and do the exact same thing, so while I'm clicking and dragging, press, uh, press the right mouse button and it'll bring this up. So now I can type in 8 as well. So I'm moving both of those dots by the exact same distance. So I'm going to go ahead and actually duplicate this tie pattern. So go to your transform pattern, select it, Control c Control v to duplicate that. Alright, so I'm also going to be sewing this tie onto itself. But I'm going to select this pattern over here right click and go to flip horizontally because I want this normal to be facing this side of the tie. The normals are facing each other and there we go. So the reason why I double up this value is because I'm sewing one side onto here and the other side onto here. But I need to go to my add point, hover over this line, right click, go to uniform split, click on OK. Now you can see each line is 24. So now I'm going to go to my segment sewing and you'll see, pay attention to the 3D workspace, how this is also being sewed. So I'm sewing this line onto this one. Now in the 2D workspace, you can see these lines are completely straight. But in the 3D workspace, it's got this twisted line uh, uh, which is included. And that's usually something you always want to fix in Marvelous Designer. But in this case, I'm actually going to keep it twisted like this. And you'll see why when this is actually sewed. So I'm sewing this onto this piece and that's also twisted. Now I'm sewing the tie onto itself, so this gets sewed onto here. And to extend the sewing, just go to Edit Sewing and click and drag on this point until you reach this dot and do the same for the other side. So that's, sewing, uh, that's being sewed onto itself. Now I can just maybe just click and drag a box like this and arrange this a little bit better. Bring this a bit closer and press Spacebar. And there we go. So we've got a basic tie on here. And now because those lines were basically twisted, it's creating this twisted region on the tie over here, which just adds a little bit more realism because a realistic, or should I say a real tie, also has a little bit of a knot or a twist on this part of the tie. So remember, this is the illusion of a tie. We're not actually tying a tie in the program, uh, but we're creating an illusion. But it still looks pretty believable. Okay, so there we go. So to make this tie look a lot more believable, I need to create this piece of fabric over here on the tie as well. So to do that, all you have to do is go to the, hold on your left mouse button, select rectangle, and I'm going to draw out a rectangle like this. I'm holding down shift so that it draws out a perfect square. Okay, and I'm just going to move these pieces down a little bit. So I want the length of this piece to almost be as long as the tie uh, in terms of width and then I can always make this a bit shorter later on. So now I'm going to go to my edit pattern, 
click on this point, move this in, and then while I'm moving it, right click, and I'm going to move that in by 8 millimeters. And I'm going to do the same for this side. So click and drag, then right click, and just type 8, click on OK. All right, now select this piece, Control C, Control V, to duplicate it. So select this pattern, right click and go to flip horizontally so that the normal is facing this way. Now this pattern piece, I want to place it underneath the tie over here. So it needs to be underneath. And then this piece over here is going to be on top. Just like this. Now before I sew these pieces on, I actually want to select my entire tie pattern and I want to bring the particle distance down to 10 just so the simulation of these two pieces can be a little bit more accurate because on 20 sometimes you can get some janky movement. Alright so once that's positioned you essentially sew in this piece onto this piece so that edge onto that edge and this edge onto this edge and once you've got that in position press spacebar now if that happens right if it flies off like that that means that I need to select these pieces double click over here these points turn orange and just make this a little bit wider right? because it's struggling to sew onto itself because there's not enough width and it's actually good that that happens so you can see how I'm troubleshooting that press spacebar and there we go now you can see it's on there and that was really easy to do so it's essentially this piece and that's what finishes this tie pattern and you can see I can bring it all the way up here and that's what makes it look a lot more believable. So it's the illusion of a tie, but as you can see, this still looks pretty good. Right, so there we go. You've officially created a tie. So now you can maybe select this, add some thickness, and I'm gonna also put this on thick textured surface, just so we can see what this looks like. And maybe put some thickness on here as well. So you can see when I tied these two pieces together, it also added its own thickness onto this garment uh, right so it's taking two pieces of fabric and tying it onto each other but it also generates some additional folds on here which make this tie look a lot better because if it's just a piece on its own it looks very flat uh, almost like a piece of paper so that's why I decided to sew this onto itself and there we go and if for whatever reason this is sliding off your tie you can always just place a pin so you can go to pin box, left click over here to place a pin and while simulation is still on, you can see I can move this and now because there's a pin over there that will never move out of place and that will never slide down the tie. Uh, but there we go, that is how you create a quick and easy tie with Marvelous Designer or should I say the illusion of a tie but it still looks very believable. And now just another tip, I know with the, with the real tie there will usually be like another piece of fabric behind this tie hanging over there which is a lot shorter than the one in the front. If you wanted to do that you can. Uh, all you have to do is select this pattern piece, Control C, Control V. And I'm going to make this shorter than this pattern and this is if you want to do this, you know, add this detail. You can now just put this behind this part of the tie. And I'm just going to grab these pieces and just move it forward for now and freeze it so that it doesn't move away from there. And let me just hide my 3D character. So you're basically taking this piece and you're, sew you're sewing it onto the top of this piece over here. So you're sewing this onto this. Now just make sure your lines over here at the back are straight. Otherwise you'd have to go there and reverse sewing. But those are straight. So now I press spacebar. And here's this, you know, like this additional piece of tie that's usually at the back. You can have that detail. There we go. And then obviously you would just want to move this back over here. Uh, so everything simulates correctly. All right, and select both pieces, right click and unfreeze that. And press spacebar. Now you can see it's having a bit of a hard time. Uh, actually wrapping around there and that might be because I need to let's just make this a little bit wider again just it's, it's very reliant on location yeah there we go then I can make it tighter while it's on there 
Cool. So now you can actually have. Let's bring our character back. You can have this additional fabric here at the back if you want it. If you want a little bit more believability. Okay. So the last thing I wanted to mention, if your tie is like puffing up and it almost looks like it's been inflated, that's because these pieces are sewed into each other. So you could always just delete this piece and just have a single piece of fabric hanging. It's up to you. And you'll probably notice that if you go into your fabric and you try and other fabric presets, it might uh, inflate this tie. So then just delete this and you'll be good to go. You'll just have a single piece of fabric. Now I also wanted to mention in case you're wondering how I actually textured this tie, you can see that there's a fabric material on here and it's quite subtle but there's a tileable knit pattern and it just helps with the overall believability of the tie as well. So I've created my own product which is 56 fabric materials at 4K resolution. All of these materials are tileable so there's a nice variety that you can choose from over here if you're trying to deal with anything that involves fabric. And I've also got these uh, tileable displacement patterns and there's a category dedicated, uh, dedicated to fabric. So if you wanted to create an instant knitted pattern, you can do that as well. So there's a lot of value with these products that I've created. This tutorial showing you how to make the maps as well. And there's also a mega, a mega bundle that contains 461 tileable maps. So it's everything, all of the maps, all of the tutorials. And this is just a really great way to support me as an artist and to support this channel as well. And you're getting a really awesome some product in return. So that's going to be the end of the tutorial. Now you can obviously select these pieces, make it longer, to make a longer tie, make it, you know, reduce the width to create a skinny tie. It's completely up to you. But I just wanted to show you that it is possible to make a tie the easy way in Marvelous Designer. You know, instead of trying to fold this with pins, you're going to give yourself a headache. Uh, I still think this looks very believable. If I, if somebody showed this to me, I would definitely think it's an actual tie that's been tied uh, but obviously we're using some tricks over here to create the illusion of a tie uh, but yeah there we go this is how you create ties with marvelous designer so let me know what you think down in the description below did you enjoy this tutorial did you find it useful and as always i truly appreciate the support on this channel so much you guys are super awesome stay tuned for some more videos and tutorials and goodbye